the biggest movers were the ones that I knew everybody was going to be in, the high volume ones, the ones that were most active and everything. So I went to a micro float kind of scam. I got rid of the minimum trades for the day, you know, and I didn't care what the thresholds were. And I started watching a few stocks that would bounce around. They had, you know, the bid ask spread was huge. These are stocks that there was no trades coming across for, you know, 15, 20 minutes at a time. But when they did come across, it would be 15, 20% jump from the previous price back and forth. What was the game plan if one of those things just started running without you with the, the lower liquidity? Is it exit immediately, take my 20, you're saying, you know, 15, 20% hit? Or is it some sort of kind of average in, see if you could repair the position, that type of thing? Fortunately, I didn't get hit with that often. And I did average in a couple of them and, and I didn't take a whole position on them or that just take a piece of the position. So that just got, uh, like I said, it's not something I studied a lot. It was just part of the strategy that I employed for the contest. I think it's something that might be worth looking into in my real trading. And I would definitely do it again in another contest allowed short. Okay, everyone, welcome back to another interview for a PMC contest winner. This one, we have Charlie, also known as Spanky, from the Battle of the Bears contest. So this was a super fun one uh, brought to you by Centerpoint, where they focus as a broker on the ability to find these shares to short. So we thought a great contest for that would be to look only to the short side. So that was the main rules, is that you had to focus on the short side you couldn't even look, even in this incredible bull market we had, we couldn't even look at anything to buy. You had to be on the short side. So it was a very, very interesting contest and actually a really action-packed last day with a, a lot of winners kind of changing hands and doing all that. So I am super happy to chat to the winner here. And hey, Charlie, how's it going? It's going well, thank you. How about you? Oh, it's going fantastic. So you said you had all winners today. So that's good. That's good that I think I've pulled I've pulled you away from this, the screens to, to do this instead. You don't want to mess up a day like that. Yeah, I got out of everything before I started this. So yeah, absolutely. So first of all, let's just start with the the absolute basics. Well, first of all, thank you for a participating in the tournament and B for uh, for coming and hanging out and seeing if you can get any tidbits of information for our users today. But let's just get started with how long have you been doing this and, and how did you get interested in trading? Um, I've been trading for uh, maybe two and a half years now, but it's a part-time thing. I'm winding down my business. I've ran for almost 30 years, but as it demands less, to, less of my time, I have more time to focus on trading. So... I wouldn't say that uh, I have the full experience of two and a half years since it's just been part time, but uh, it's been a lot of fun and I think I've learned a lot and grown a lot and TI has helped a lot. And so as the trading room, there's a lot of good advice that comes in that TI trading room from Barry and the rest of them. Oh, good. Well, now I'll have to hide this from him because we don't want to inflate his head too big, but it... Uh definitely is something that I, I enjoy that we do is is giving access to all of that kind of uh, free resource and all that. So have you been in the have you been in the trading room for that whole time? Or did you find it a little bit later? Or how did that work? I think I found it a little bit later, but I've been in there for quite a while now. Um, but I'm just a lurker for the most part. I don't um, I, because my other uh, uh, duties, uh, requirements, I, I can't pay full time and I don't want to get in there and start uh, talking about something, get pulled away and leave somebody hanging or something, you know? Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> and do you, uh, you know, I know this is uh, how Barry works, but are you mainly focused on exclusively day trading? Do you, do you swing positions, any of that, or are you just day trading right now? I do have a second swing account that I do swing some things with, but uh, the, the, you know, most of the stuff, obviously in the trading room, I'm just, are my daytime activities and for a while there you know the one of the things that uh, got beaten into me is get out of all these trades before the end of the day these are garbage companies and you get burned a couple times mm -hmm. <laughs> i mean they're not all they're not all garbage companies but you know what i mean um, yeah m most most of them especially <laughs> now were you experienced with shorting to to start with or were you mostly long to to in your trading career so far because i know barry is i would say majority long yeah, I was majority along for a long time, but I've been trading or shorting now for uh, quite some time. I don't know 
that uh, I'm more comfortable with the longs at this point than the shorts, but I'm getting uh, more comfortable. I think it might, and that might be a misnomer. I might be more balanced these days than I was, say, six months ago. So well, that's good. Yeah, because that's you know the um, the returns that you put in were were obviously awesome with a ninety seven percent. And we were saying before the uh, the recording started that you know we were watching. At the end of the day, at the end of the contest, we do this live stream where we're watching all the trades, and you just ticked over a hundred percent for a little bit there. Uh, gave a little back, I think, probably because there was a couple of people nipping at your heels there. So, when it came to the contest, other than obviously larger size and and more risk because it's not real money, uh, what changes did you make to say, okay, I'm I'm in a contest, I'm looking to win this thing. Um, you know, what, what changes did you end up making to your normal trading? To my normal trading? Well, I, <clears throat> obviously, oh, sorry, the from your stuff. normal, from your normal trading to, right. to the contest. I, I would say in my normal trading, I'm more focused on those trades that I'm in, but in the contest, uh, you know, you're trying to get all that money shoved in there and working for you. So I was busy looking for other alerts and other things that I could look at. Yeah, that, that was pretty tricky watching on the one hand what's going on with those shorts, looking for other shorts that might not be quite as volatile that wouldn't, you know, that you don't, don't have to babysit so much, I would say. Mm. And the other the other thing about that is, you know, having been in these in, previously, <clears throat> I my, part of my part of my strategy was not to be in the, those big movers that everybody else was in, but to try to find things that other people likely weren't looking at. And uh, I got into, there was a couple of them I got into. I got in a little bit earlier that everybody else piled into, um, what was it, Momentous. Uh, I got in way too early. And that was, uh, that, that was a lot of fun watching that because it became, became apparent to me that everybody else had gotten in way after me. I got in way too early. Um, and it went up to like two bucks. I forget where exactly it went. But I was buried, but I was watching everybody on the on the in the leaderboard and it became obvious that, that some of those folks that were nipping at my heels were also in that. So I had to hold my position and pray that <laughs> because if I had moved some, because I was moving right in line, right with them, right. Even though, yeah. even though numbers were different, but I had to hold on to sort of, you know, had to hold on to that trade and not get rid of it. And I got a lot more stubborn because it was the contest and getting, I would have sloughed off that position a lot sooner. I think in normal trading, but in the contest, I left it. And like I said, I didn't babysit it enough. I was off looking for something else, and I come back and I was like, "Oh my gosh, what has happened?" And I, my instinct was to to dump the trade, but then I noticed, well, geez, look, there's two or three other guys or people in the same trade. We're moving pretty much in sync, and so I can't really get rid of it and take that big loss at that point. And it did turn around for me, and I got was it was able actually to turn it turn it what would have been a huge loss into a huge profit. Well, I, I don't know about a huge profit, a nice profit. <laughs> well, with <laughs> with ninety seven percent gain, ninety seven thousand in in three days, you know everything ends up being a, a nice a nice profit um, to get to that point. So. You mentioned that uh, you were in this one kind of too early and that you were looking for stocks that most people, you're trying to get under the radar type name. So just walk me through that process. How did you end up actually finding your names that, and then what did you do to kind of filter out the names that you thought everyone else were in? Like, what was that process to, again, just get get past the kind of the headline names, the ones that everyone were talking about and dig a little deeper? Yeah, the biggest movers um, were, were the ones that I knew everybody was going to be in, the high volume ones, the ones that were, you know, most actives and everything. So I went to a micro float kind of scan. Um, okay. I got rid of the minimum trades for the day, you know, and I didn't care what the thresholds were. And I started watching a few stocks that would, would bounce around. They had, you know, the bid ask spread was huge. But if you watched them, there was it wasn't something I want to necessarily risk real money with, not a lot. Maybe maybe it's something I'll experiment with, but I would watch them and I would sort of see the pattern. And, you know, these are stocks that they, there was no trades coming across for, you know, 15, 20 minutes at a time. But when they did come across, it would be 15, 20% jump from the previous price back and forth. So I'd wait for it to bounce up and jump in and wait for it to bounce down and jump out. 
and uh, I compiled a list of two or three of those that I was and BYU was one of them that earlier in the contest in the first couple of days, there wasn't much volume, but towards the end of the contest, everybody ended up being in it because I don't even know if it made news or what, but everybody, but quite a few other people seem to have found it. And I only know that because I think you mentioned it in the last hour that folks were in it. And I think I even mentioned that that was not my first because you saw I was in it and other people were in it. And I, and I mentioned that that was, had not been my first trade on BYU for the day. So that was a that was a crazy one i i'm just looking at it here for a second it's like a dollar to to seven bucks and now it's right back down so just absolutely kind of collapsed after that um so that's interesting with the micro caps now what is your game plan for you know you said there'd be these massive moves one way or another 20 percent or so what was the game plan if one of those things just started running without you with the the lower liquidity? Is it uh, exit immediately, take my 20, you were saying, you know, 15, 20% hit? Or is it some sort of kind of average in, see if you could repair the position, that type of thing? Um, fortunately, I didn't get hit with that often. And I did average in a couple of them. And, and I didn't take a whole position on them, but I just take a piece of a piece of the position so that, and the, you know, and you, just got, uh, like I said, it's not something I studied a lot. It was just part of the strategy that I employed for the contest. I think it's something that is might be worth looking into in my real trading. And I would definitely do it again in another contest allowed short. So, um, but you know, again, they're, they're high risk stocks. And if I'm trading it with my money, I'm not sure that I'm willing to take a big position on it, um, to take the risk. Yeah. Now, if um, if you are interested, you know, you're saying these are incredibly risky. Is there any part of you that's going to take some of what you're trading here with these more higher risk stocks and apply tiny buying power to it? Because it seems like, you know, if you can make a 97 percent return with a large amount of money, then, you know, even if you do one tenth of that, that's it's still a, a great little return. I have toyed with the idea of taking a small position and and trading it like like I've traded or have traded in these contests just to to, to see what happens. Uh, but I haven't pulled the I haven't pulled the trigger on that. <laughs> well, you know that's the again the beauty of paper trading and then having a paper right. trader is right you can continue to play. But it would be very interesting to see. Obviously, you would run into liquidity constraints pretty quickly. But, uh, you know, if it's working for you and, and, you know, with a small amount of, of money, then it's still better than nothing, assuming it doesn't take uh, too much to babysit. Now, uh, we're, you know, you're talking about watching that last bit of the tournament, and that's always my favorite part where we're kind of, you know, talking about what, what happened, um, you know, as it's happening. Now, how closely did you follow that? And then how closely did you follow the leaderboard for the rest of it? Is Did you always have kind of half an eye on how you were doing relative to everyone else or, or was it only near the end that you really started to focus on it? I think I had the leaderboard up for, for the majority of the contest. And to be honest, the first day of the contest, it didn't have my full attention. Um, but when I was in the top 10 and doing well, I sort of cleared my calendar uh, for the next couple of days and I had more time to focus on it, especially on Friday because going into Friday, although if you remember Thursday night, um, Captain Para was in a huge trade. I wrote down this ticker, uh, UBXG had shorted it just before the market closed. He was in the room and he had mentioned to Barry that he had gotten out of half his position. And had he, and, and, you know, he could have been a monster if he could have gotten out of that position. And likewise, it was noted that if he had held that position until four o'clock on Friday, he probably would have won the, the contest as well. But that was, a, that was another crazy one. But um, I did keep the leaderboard up, but I had it on the website. So I think at 15 minutes delayed because I can't get live on both. But I, I did keep a pretty good eye on it starting Thursday, especially Thursday after like Captain Para fell off the board and things started to look like consolidating that I'm actually the leader and I might be actually, you know, gaining ground on folks. So um and and that's interesting too because yes it was uh 
the leaderboard was was certainly tight at the end there for sure. And you know, both of these names that you mentioned, the the BYU and the the UBXJ, these are both these random Chinese companies that came out of nowhere and just absolutely exploded and then and then tanked back down. Did you focus on any sort of uh, fundamentals, even, you know, looking at the country they're in or, or anything about them? Or were these purely chart plays? Like, did you go in and say, Okay, what is this company? Is it legitimate? Is this something that I think is is a junkie company that I'm going to short? Or is it just simply, I see the chart, it, it looks overextended, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait to short it there. It was it was just looking at the chart and waiting for the what, what I thought was the right entry time. I may have noticed what what country the stocks were from, and I may have been a little bit more excited when they were a Chinese stock than maybe some of the others. But yeah. um, I, I absolutely did not take the time to spend too much time researching what they were. I spent more time looking, getting a list of possible tickers to trade versus uh, getting bogged down on one or two and you know taking too long to de- make a decision about uh, where I was going to go with it. And you saw my feelers, I think, when you looked at it. I would I would get into a position and move on and then come back and see that it was working and, and take a bigger position uh, or dump it, depending on what the case may be. So yeah, you've mentioned that a couple of times. You mentioned, you know, starter positions and feeler positions is is that kind of like, okay, I'm going to enter a little bit and then if it goes against me, I'm averaging in or are you, are you purely just putting out a feeler? And if you start to see that position work for you, is that when you're stepping on the gas? Um, yes. When it's, when it's starting to work for me, I get, I get more committed to the more conviction in the trade than what, where I was when I, when I first got in, I think there was a couple of trades that I got in pretty, pretty big. I'm, I'm not sure that there was any trades that I started with the 20,000 um, share position or not. There may have been, I just don't recall it, if there were any. Um, in prior contests, I just found myself getting, jumping in with big, big pieces, in, you know, max share size and sort of stuck there. Not only do you t- tie up the equity, but if it works against you, you, you know, you take a, a big loss and drop mm-hmm. drop into oblivion. So it, it it's funny because you know I, I interview the the winners of of everyone who's kind of willing to go on, and that is something that I just hear over and over and over again. So for you know talking to the audience now, uh, you know I'm always trying to grab pieces of information, and that one I just hear, especially on the people. I know you don't short exclusively in your real trading, but you do a bit of both. But I, I just hear that so much of I put out a little position that gets me kind of interested in the trade. And then if you know, if I take on the, the trade and I get stopped out, that's fine. But looking to add to winners and not looking to add to losers is something that again, I hear over and over and over again. And it's, you know, we've all been there where we do the opposite and usually pay the price for it when you're when you're averaging down as something that's going against you. But again, just f- from hearing from people that are winning uh, over and over again, over again in these challenges. Yeah, it's it's I put out a trade, I have an idea if it starts to work for me, I start to really pile in. Now, at some point, you got to get out. Now, what was your what were you looking for when because I think and this is something I still struggle with, this is the hardest part of trading is knowing when to to cut and say, okay, I've gotten a good trade here. I want to take my money and move on and just be okay if, in this case for shorts, that it just, you know, tumbles down to zero like some of these stocks look like they did. So what was your what was your exit strategy? Well, I, I, I my, for, for most of the trades, I don't think I, I held them for a long time. I think I got out of them when I, when, when I saw momentum start to, to, to dissipate. And there was a couple of trades that I got out of because I wanted the equity to get into the next trade, to be honest with you. So those those two are probably that in in that order were probably the driving factors. Did I have a, a, a did I want to get into something or or, or um, get a larger position in something that's working better for me and go ahead and take the take the win and move on, or you know take the win and move on and go find something else. Yeah. And that's an that's a that's an interesting way to do it. It's kind of you know rotational in that respect, right? You're looking to say, okay, I've, I've gotten my money here. I see this setting up. I need the capital. So I need to cover this and then move on to this. So, um, you know, that, and then of course, would you hold any of these overnight or were you just always out at the end of the day, just clear the slate and move on? 
of the ones that I traded in, no, I don't think I, I, I can't think of any. Although I did have a couple overnight trades. I don't know if I want to. Uh, I, I, after Wednesday night, I made sure that I, or I mean, yeah, the Wednesday was the first night. So on Thursday mm -hmm. night, I made sure I was, I had an open trade. Now, I don't think I had any sort of position in it, but I didn't, but of course, people watching the leaderboard don't know that. So, oh, I, clever. <laughs> I like that. A little game in the system a little bit. Well, I like that because it, it's, you know, as much as, um, you know, we want this to be a, a training tool and an engagement tool, it's also still a game, right? So you're, you're still playing right. to, to win the game, which I don't think there's anything wrong with at all. But yeah, you gave up that little secret there. Keep keep your opponents guessing, right? Um, because we exactly. did notice near the end of the final day, you know, people are just struggling to catch up and they're taking just you know, as big of positions as they can on the craziest stuff where you saw, you know, people getting up to um, like second or third and then just completely kind of blowing it out of the water. So uh, how do you keep your cool? Like we mentioned that you were up over 100,000, you went down. Um, are you trying to predict what the other people are going to trade and try to match their position so they can never catch up? Or are you just kind of watching the P&L and if there's a big enough gap, you're trying to stay, stay safe? I think in that last hour, if there's a big enough gap, you just try to say stay safe. But Vanmark was, I think it was Vanmark that came charging right up and got within a couple of thousand. And then, and I think that's when I took a position because uh, he had me nervous. But then my trade fell apart and his fell apart. So I think we were in the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so I wasn't in there long. I was in and out. I was just trying to protect that lead. I, I, I wasn't in a, I didn't have a huge amount of the position. But I took, I, I think, six or 7,000 thinking that that would protect my lead um, because and it may or who, who knows, you know, it was just a, it was just gamble. It, felt, it didn't work for me. I got out right away. And that's when I dropped, I think, below the 100 percent. But it uh, in the end, it was, you know, a nail biter. I yes. mean, you, in the last hour, I, I think I had to, to uh resist the urge to get into something watching that leaderboard you know it's like oh i'm comfortable twenty five thousand. that should be pretty good oh twenty thousand i'll hold well fifteen thousand is still a good lead <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know? they were they were climbing there was just not enough time but yeah they were they were nipping at your heels they were climbing up for sure um now i know it, it, this question is always kind of feeding your competition but do you have any advice of somebody who's who's looking to get into a contest of of what they could do and what they can take away from a future contest right because you want to win that's fun but while you're doing it you know what do you kind of focus on to say okay i i want to win this but even if i don't i want to experiment or, or learn something while, while i'm trading I, I, well I think this has been said over and over again. They got to practice with the with the with the paper trader, with the simulator, right? Yeah. I mean, if you're not comfortable with that, I think I I think I even took a long position early on, in and out of it. I just hit the wrong button, mm -hmm. and you know, you just need to get used to it. It's not something I don't. I think well, that's not the paper trader I used when I first started trading. So it took a while to get used to it, and the idiosyncrasies of any system that you're using. You, you, you want to be familiar with. So that's, that's, that's the first thing. Um, I think in the first couple of, uh, of these competitions that I, that I was in, I, I was more, more, and maybe it's because I thought that I was up against more experienced traders. I was more or less following the lead. You know, it's like, I think I was doing everything everybody else was doing. Yeah. Not in the early ones, but sort of in the middle. And that's why I changed it up this time. I said, well, I got it not be doing, doing what everybody else is doing um and i may lose badly but it, you got to switch it up and do something different if you're if you're going to play the game right so i guess that's that was my philosophy now i don't know that i have enough confidence in my real pit trading to, to employ some of the things and definitely i wouldn't be in as many volatile trades at one time as i was at certain points of the competition but there's certainly something to be I, you know it's got that itch in the back of my mind that says, hey, you go out there with a the small position, like I said, go ahead and set aside some time or even paper trade it and see if you can develop a strategy. And it might be something that you do on those days that the market just isn't giving you anything. Maybe, no. maybe those will be the days to, to look at that. I love that. And I love the, um, especially the look where 
other people aren't looking, right? Because that's, again, just to toot our own horn a little bit, that's something we do great at Trade Ideas where you can customize your your scans to your liking. And you're right, you, you would end up seeing as someone who would look in the back of the leaderboard for the videos and the streams and everything I do, you'd end up seeing the same five or six symbols. And it, it makes sense because those are the ones that have some sort of news catalyst, there's something happened that day, and those are the ones that are trading. But if most traders are doing the same thing and you're just doing what everyone else is doing, well, uh, you're gonna have a little bit of a hard time with that. So it does make sense to say, hey, you know, let me know what everyone is doing, but then let me try to branch off, even if just a little bit, like you were talking about, you know, trading different uh, different cap sizes and things like that, just to try to give me an edge over what everyone else is doing. I think that parallels a little bit to trading as well, where if you just do what everyone else is doing in trading and, and you don't differentiate yourself at all, then we know most traders fail most traders have a hard time so just having that mentality of let me think try to think outside the box and think of of what's uh what's different i think definitely makes sense so listen thanks i i love i love these conversations i think these are fantastic i appreciate you coming out are you going to compete in future contests is there a chance i can see you back up here again I, 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 yeah, I'm an annual subscriber. I'm a premium member. So, uh, oh, yeah. So, um, you get the, I, 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 I will be there. And this, uh, sort of, I'm sort of looking at this like, you know, I've gotten my premiums back. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm good for will. two more years. <laughs> and that's perfect. I, we, we love it. And, and I love to see you back because I love, yeah. it's one thing I love about the contest is that every time we have a contest, you see some new people coming in because it's growing and, and it's getting, you know, more people notice. But, you see a lot of the same participants over and over, which means that uh, it's not random, right? If it was random, then, you know, you put a couple hundred people in there, every time you'd get a, a different 10 leaderboards. But it means that the people that are participating are are learning from this and are developing some strategies that keeps them on the top of the leaderboard. So listen, I, I hope I hope to have you back. Well, if you win another one, it'll be fantastic. Yeah. I I hope to be back, but you know, I will add, you guys, you said you, this is going to be added going back to your question about, about tips. I think uh, people that are try, doing the trial and stuff, they need to get in there early and learn how to modify those scans themselves. The scans that I'm running during a competition like this are not the scans that I'm running <laughs> when I'm trading my money. I mean, yeah. cause you're going to, you can, like I already, already suggested that, you know, some of the volume, um, thresholds that I have, I, I lowered and, and started looking at those ahead of time and play with those scans. Because if you're just going in there and using the scans that everybody else is, you're going to be in what everybody else is going to be. And, and when I say you can't do what everybody else is doing, that's yeah, that's mostly for me midday and mid, mid morning and afternoon, right? In the morning, you're probably going to be doing what everybody else is going to be doing because you can't mm -hmm. miss out on some of those, those, those big ones. So. Crazy ones, yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. So how long for just your own, your own sake, how long did it take you to, to feel that you were proficient enough at using trade ideas that you could just dive in and, and make all of those changes yourself to right, some, a month, a couple months, how long to. It, 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 it was probably a couple months. I reached out to support a couple times when I wanted, uh, okay scans i think i i think some of the stuff that for my trading that i was asking for was sort of digging stuff up out of the the archives that people have moved away from but you know i wanted to take a look at it and then i you know would tweak them and stuff and the trading room helps a lot and you know with the um i've only done a couple of them you know the custom formulas kind of thing oh you're um, going deep and, yeah 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 my background my background is programming so you, uh, you, you know, I got in there and sense. started looking at looking at it, and and it took me a while to correlate what I wanted to see with you know what what's available for me to to go after, um, it, you know, in the scans. So, okay, well that's I I love that I love that advice. Take some time, learn the system, understand what it is you're going to do before you hop into it. So. Thank you very much, Spanky. Um, You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> an interesting name there, but uh, it, it's uh, it's funny. It's a, it's a moniker that's been with me for for quite some time. I think my I used to play. I still play poker. I used to play poker a lot, and Spanky was my uh, always like if you got on the waiting list for a poker table, it was always Spanky. And, 
<laughs> people would always crack, crack up when you know they'd call spanky to the table <laughs> that, that was the it was the same when i was doing the live stream i was like oh dear here's spanky <laughs> but thankfully not offensive we haven't we haven't figured out what's going to happen because at some point someone's going to win with a name that uh that's going to be problematic oh, yeah. but at least at least that was just funny at that point so i like that but thank you very much for coming by i appreciate you uh you doing this interview and and taking your time to to hang out with me uh, hopefully i'll yep. talk to you yep. soon i would look forward to it i'll do my best <laughs> thanks <laughs> take care